In today's video, I'll show you how to let users update or edit specific fields or information inside of your Airtable base without needing to invite them to your base as a full on collaborator. You may or may not have seen that Airtable recently released a feature called Editable Shared Grid View. This is a really great feature that they released. But unfortunately, they ended up withdrawing this feature only a few hours later. It turns out Airtable had released it by accident and did not mean for the general public to have access to this feature. What did this feature do? Well, it lets you actually share a view within your Airtable base with anybody out there. They didn't need to be a subscriber to Airtable. They could be a client of yours. They could be a friend, a family member. And once you shared that view with them and turned on this setting that was released, that member could now edit that view and update information inside of your Airtable base. This has been a real pain point for Airtable users in terms of roles, permissions, access, because currently you're not able to let any users update your Airtable base other than by inviting them as a full on collaborator to your base. And unfortunately, when somebody becomes a collaborator in your base, it means they have access to the entire base. There is no way for you to actually partition or restrict access or do roles in terms of what a user can or cannot see. So it just means if you have any data inside of your base that you say, for instance, want to invite a client into to use a certain part of your base, that's currently not possible with the way the Airtable user roles and permissions are currently set up. It's probably the primary reason that tools like Stacker, Softer, Pori, Mini Extensions exist in today's world is because of Airtable's inability to allow you to restrict access or to create a secure way of hiding content from different user groups. So in today's video, I'm going to take a feature that was released by Airtable just this week that has not subsequently been withdrawn. It was intentionally released. It wasn't accidentally released like the editable shared grid view. And I'm going to show you how to use that feature. It's called pre-filled hidden form fields inside of Airtable. I'm going to show you how to take that feature and basically recreate what was possible with the editable shared grid view, i.e. You can take this feature and create a, an automation in your base so as to allow clients, friends, family members, anybody that's not a full Airtable user and that you don't want to invite in as a full collaborator into your base. You can use this workaround as a way to allow them edit and update specific records as set by you or specific fields as set by you in a shared grid view. So. Stick with me. I'm going to show you exactly how to do that step by step and let's go. Okay, so this is what we're going to be building out today. This is a client portal that I have built for my client, Bill Gates. And as you can see here, this is basically a shared view from my Airtable base being my client portal base. If I just show you what I mean by allowing a user who's not an Airtable user and who is not a collaborator on my base to update a record, if we take this here, it turns out Bill had hugely underreported his May 2021 last year and um, his, his figures. So what he needs to do is he's going to come in, he spotted his mistake and he's going to update it. So he's going to click edit here. And this is bringing him effectively to an Airtable form field and or form. And what is happening here is there's actually some hidden fields. And this is the new feature that was released by Airtable this week that has not been removed from us. and what is in behind this, I'll show you shortly, but it's actually a hidden field that has the record ID of the monthly record in it. And I'll show you why that's important in just a second. So if we go here and we're going to update his revenue, it turns out that he actually sold 80 million euros worth of Microsoft subscriptions that month and it only costs him 9 million euros. So he's got a pretty good profit margin of about 50% there. And if he should save, that should give him this message saying that he's basically updated the data. And if we come back into the portal, you'll see here that the data has updated to what he has just entered. And I think I went too slowly there that you didn't get to see the, the green automation update. So I might just do another quick one because there's something very satisfying about seeing that green outline update in an Airtable base. I don't know if you feel the same way. Let me know if you do like that. There's something particularly pleasing about it in the interface. Anyway, he'll come in here and it turns out that again, he's really under, under reported revenue here. And actually this month he did 
26 million. He really even surpassed himself. And again, he's holding his profit margin of 50%. So if we hit save there, we come back to our base and you'll see there's that very satisfying green automation flow that is updating the record that he has just done. And it's now where this video is being made um, in 2022 time and it's now coming up to May 2022 and Bill has basically completed his May 2022 results. And he's going to click add a new record here and this is opening a new record and you'll see here I've got a customized message in a pre-filled field here. This field is not hidden though. I've purposely set it that way so that it has sort of a customized message in it. And this is driven by a formula field in the Airtable backend that I'll show you shortly as well. So Bill is filling out the May 22 results and he's going to go in and he is not going to under report this time. And he's made 30 million in May. He's had a pretty good month again. And again, he's holding firm at his 50% um oops too many zeros his 50% margin if we hit submit and if we come back you'll see that he'll have a new entry that's added just in here down the bottom of his client portal okay so the key to the edit slash update functionality lies in the formula behind this button field and if we click into the button field here it's on our data tab and it is using a concatenate formula here effectively which starts with a unique url for a form and the form is actually set up on a tab or a table that i've specifically set up for this workflow and it's called the data updates table so in your use case you might call it whatever it is that you're allowing users to update. You might create a table next to that and call it the update table of that thing that they are updating. And if you come into this table, this table is purely intended to be used as a sort of processing or update slash editing functionality table. So there'll never actually be records in here because every time the user edits a record, it's going to be a form that's entered on this table, an Airtable form. And then as soon as it's entered, an automation is going to run in here. And the automation is basically going to take the data from this form that has been submitted, find the record in the table that we're actually trying to update or edit. So in this case, we're going to catch data in here, the revenue and cost of goods sold data in our data updates table. And our automation is going to say, find the data record ID of the record in this table that the button has been picked on. Okay. So this all may clear as we go through each of the fields, but okay. So if we look at our form on the data update table as a starting point, and if we close this so you can actually see what's going on here. Effectively, we've got three fields and one of them is a pre-filled hidden field. And this is the new feature from Airtable. Before this feature, we were always able to pre-fill fields, but we were not able to hide those fields while it was pre-filled. And now we can. And I suppose the advantage of that is that there's no, there's far less risk of a user editing the data that you had pre-filled because now it's hidden from their default form view. Previously, what we had to do was effectively write a little note to our users because we weren't able to hide the field. We were able to pre-fill it with whatever value we wanted, but we'd have to write a note to our users saying, basically, please don't change whatever information I have pre-filled in here because I need to keep that information for my automations to run and whatever else. So this is a really great feature and it's opened up probably quite a lot of use cases. And so I'll show you the formula of how we're going to pre-fill this field. And what do you think we're going to want to pre-fill in there? Well, we're going to want to pre-fill the record ID of the row in this table that we're trying to update or let the user update through the button. And so how do we get the record ID of the record in here that we want the user to be able to update and get it to pre-fill into this hidden field in the form so that our automation when the entry comes in here can take the record id and tell 
the automation which row or record in here to update with the revenue and cost of goods sold information that has just been submitted okay and so the way to do that is basically i have exposed the record id of each record in the data table so in your use case whatever table you're trying to update add a formula field to expose the record id and that effectively looks like this and then next thing to do will be to add a button field and a button field in Airtable it works quite similarly to a formula field in that you can configure it with a formula and if you choose the open URL action in this case what we're doing is we're taking the Airtable form URL that comes from this form that we've created on our data updates table where we click share form you're going to get a unique share form url there so i've copied that and i've brought it in here into this concatenate formula and i've dropped it in there at the beginning and then what you're able to do with the formula in here is add on what's called parameters so you'll see here from this question mark on is basically question mark prefill is a parameter and following the underscore is the name of the field in Airtable. So the data record ID field is being pre-populated here. And so where is that coming from? Well, if you come over here into my data updates table and go back to our grid view, you will see it's coming from here. So basically I'm taking the field name that I would like to pre-fill with information. And if we jump back into the button field in here, and if I can just scroll across, you'll see what I'm adding or what I'm pre-filling into the data record ID pre-filled hidden field in the form is the record ID of the current row that I'm on. So it, if you click here, that's referencing the record ID field in this table. So the record ID field is this one here that has the unique record ID associated with that record. And in that way, it's basically passing that to the form field in here, every time a user opens it up, depending on which edit button they've clicked, it's going to pass the record ID of that specific row into this hidden field that the user doesn't see. And then it's just asking them to fill in the updated revenue and cost of goods sold value. And I suppose what I've done is I've also added a parameter onto the formula here to pre-fill those values. So similarly to the pre-fill data record ID, you've got another parameter and to start another parameter it always starts with this ampersand here and then prefill and underscore and then you name you put in the name of the field next equals and then i'm actually adding in the revenue value from the table here because i suppose i would prefer the user when they're updating or editing the information to have the default information as a placeholder in the form so you saw when I went into the share share view there and um, opened the shared view for build. Is it here somewhere? Yeah, here it is here. And so you'll see here, this one's starting at 8 million and 9 million. And when you open that, it's by default, it has those values in the field. And I suppose that's probably good practice or a good habit to get into when you're asking users to update or edit a field purely on the basis that there's a, there's a risk that they might if the fields are not pre-filled and they're blank, they might leave a blank and then hit save. And so it's actually going to overwrite the data in that record in your Airtable base and it's going to turn it to blank. Whereas they might thought they might think, oh, if I just update whatever I want to update, it should just update that and leave the other value. But no, it'll actually leave it as blank. So I would probably suggest using a pre-fill in the way that I've done it here. Um, and it makes it easy for your, for your users, clients, families, friends, whoever it is that you're sending the, the form to update the data with. Um, it makes it easy for them to, particularly if it's not just a number, it might be a long text field or something that they maybe want to edit just a sentence or two. And so it'll pre-fill the value in using this method and they can then just edit the the existing value that's there inside of the form so the last piece to this formula is the critical part and it's this new feature and it allows you to hide it it allows you to hide a field so we're hiding that data record id field which is this data record id field that references the data record id field 
from the data updates table. Bit of a tongue twister there. And um, it's basically Airtable have allowed this functionality through adding an additional form parameter or parameter onto the form URL effectively. And the parameter in this case is hide underscore. And then you name, it's the name of the field and then turn that on. So equals true. And you have that at the end of your formula. And so that gives us our edit button. And that's exactly how I have achieved the functionality that I just showed you earlier on in this video. So final piece to this workaround is the automation that I talked about earlier. So I'll just click through the automation here and you can see exactly how I have configured this. So the trigger is when a form is submitted. So every time a client or a member or family member of yours submits the form, it's going to trigger this automation. So when a form is submitted, take it from the data updates table and it's this edit monthly results form that's on the data updates table. And then the, the first action is to update a record. And so what we're doing is we are updating a record, not on the update data table, but on the actual data table itself, even though the form is on the updates data table. And how are we finding the record in the data table? Well, we're taking this data record ID field. This is the pre-filled hidden form field that is passing the record ID associated with the record that the user clicked the edit button on. And so that's how the automation knows which record to update based on the form that has been submitted. And then all we're doing is saying, take the revenue and the cost of goods sold value from the submitted form and overwrite the data that is in the record currently in the data table. And then the last piece I have here, this is more from a database management point of view, more so than anything else. And so you don't really need this last bit to run. And it is a little bit more complicated than everything else we've covered here today. It's basically running a script to delete the, to delete the record that's created in your data updates table here, because you actually have no need for that record any longer. And if you're like me and you use your Airtable base or your for Airtable for virtually everything in your business, you'll find that you'll quickly come up against your record uh, data limits on the pro plan in Airtable. You can have a maximum of 50,000 records. So as a database management of best practice tip, if you can delete records as you go where possible, this is a good habit to get into as well. It just keeps your record levels down. And I suppose, why have I had to use a script there in this, in this automation? Well, because there's currently no native action inside of Airtable automations to delete a record. You can create a record, you can update a record, but you can't currently delete a record natively. So I've taken this script and I'm able to delete the record using the record ID as created by this step one. So as always, thanks for watching. If you got any value from today's video, you might think about subscribing to my channel. Please consider liking the video. It helps me get my video in front of more people like yourself. And it helps me grow my channel. So I'd really appreciate that. And if you would like to dive deeper into today's tutorial, I embed every Airtable base that I do a tutorial like this on inside of my no code community. So if you'd like to join that community, there's a link in the description of the video below. And if you did like this tutorial, I think you'll really like this video next. If you'd like to go and check that out, it talks about more concepts like this using Airtable and other no-code tools.